It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! Tonight, let us make them remember we are not afraid! No fear, no fear, no fear here on Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, each and every day from Freedom's Phoenix Farm here in Phoenix, Arizona on LRN.FM Network, broadcasting live to the planet. Now, I want to continue uh, this today, Monday, with Libya, and I, and I want to you know kind of get a beat on uh, perspective on some things that not necessarily we all agree on, but we need to have everybody's understanding of this from the early beginning, because I like archiving these comments so that in the future we can look back and go, what was our mindset then? What was the promise? What was the advocacy for? What was the rhetoric? Drums being beaten the loudest in advocacy for what kind of action? Kinetic military action? What does that mean? Well, you know, we have somebody that can you know, help us with this. Uh, Les Rayburn, he's a 35 years in the Army. He did two years in Vietnam, two tours in Iraq. He's highly decorated combat, combat veteran. And he has a, a website, Les, L-E-S, Rayburn.com. R-A-Y-B-U-R-N.com. Les Rayburn.com. I got you there, Les? Yes, sir, you do. Les, let me tell you, I'm, I'm going to read from Obama is running from our superpower responsibilities. Let me let me read your paragraph there real quick. And we can discuss it, okay? The This administration's Middle Eastern policy is a joke. President Obama and Secretary Clinton are running neck and neck to see who can prove to be more clueless. President Obama is demanding that some of our country, some other country, lead the not war we are waging against Gaddafi. He is actually demanding someone else take charge and command our forces. He is clueless. We are NATO. The world looks to the U.S. for leadership. We, the United States of America, is the leader of the free world. And as president, President Obama is the leader of the free world. As president, President Obama is the leader of the free world. He does not get it. Either that or he does not want the U.S. to be a superpower. Maybe that's it. Maybe he wants the U.S. to be a third world cesspool like some of the socialist states he touts as such wonderful places. If he doesn't want to lead, he needs to quit and let someone else do it. He is still a community organizer. What a waste of a good mind. He isn't dumb. He is just clueless. Either that or he is trying to destroy this great nation. We need a leader Mr. President, it's time to step up to the plate and start acting like one. If you don't have the stomach, then don't run for re-election. Now, I'll go ahead and let you comment on that, and of course, I'll have some questions. Go ahead, Ray. Let us know what you're trying to say there. Hey, listen, the United States is NATO. It has always been NATO. The United States is the leader of the free world. When I spent many years in, in, in Europe. Every nation that is a member of NATO looks to the United States for leadership. Every nation, every freedom-loving nation has always looked to the United States for leadership. The United States represents NATO. The United States bankrolls NATO. The United States provides the, the majority of the manpower, the majority of the materiel. Between England and France, they share an aircraft carrier. That's it. Can you imagine? England and France, they share an aircraft carrier. That's all they have. Well, that's just to say that they got one. <laughs> yeah, they, they've got one. I, you, know, I don't, you know, I've always tried to wonder, I wonder if France has the front half and England has the back half, 
you know, or they, one of them has a left half and one of them has a right half. You know, that, that's ridiculous. I mean, those are two, at one time, world powers. And they still are, in a way, because everybody else is, is, has gone down. And uh, the United States is, is the superpower of the world. And, and the world looks to, the, to America for leadership. That's why everybody in the world wants to come to America. They don't come to America because of, of America is some third world country. They come to America because America is the greatest country in the world. And they look to America because America provides leadership. And, and to, uh, it, like President Reagan said, you know, we, we are that shining city on the hill. We, we, we are the great nation. And okay, let me, let me ask some questions, you know, before sure. the first break here, because I know my audience, man, they're just, they're, they're gritting their teeth, okay? <laughs> my thing is, is that, it, let's ask that one question. They look to the United States for leadership. We need to define that. When you say leadership, what does that mean? <clears throat> we set the tone. The United States set the tone. We, just, we define the mission. The United States has always defined the mission. Whether we go when we go to a to, to a meeting with with NATO, the United States sets set the mission. We set the parameters. When we sat down with the leaders of the other leaders in NATO, the United States set the parameters of, of what the mission is going to be. We have never, ever in the history of NATO stepped back and said somebody else takes charge. Somebody else needs to be in charge. Somebody else set the parameters. Somebody else tell us what's going on. We don't want to be in charge. Never in the history have we ever stepped back and, and asked, demanded that somebody else be in charge. Okay, let me go ahead and ask you some quite make a comment here and ask you your opinion on something. Let's assume that Obama or his administration, heck, the Bush administration, they got to have this, you know, coalition of the willing thing. You know, they need to have, and finally, it, it, that that kind of went thin, and and uh, uh, they say they hate us for our freedom, they hate us for filling the blank reason, and it starts to become relatively clear, certainly with the Internet and the people rising up against our governments in the Middle East, they're going, look, we, we don't want U.S. intervention. We don't want you here. We don't want go, go, go away. And it gets to the point where they might hate us because we got a guy standing there with an M16 on their corner. So you have Obama will come out and say, you know what? Hey, man, we're just we're just flying the planes. We're just flying, supplying some logistics. We're, we're just got the ships here. We're, we're not ground forces. You guys do it. You know, go get them. You know, blame them for a while. We're tired of being on the you know, front line here, getting all this criticism and being blamed for everything. And the radical Muslims rising up and we hate America. So I can I can understand from that argument that he'd like, look, we need somebody. But to think that any country, even the United States, is really in charge of these things is to be naive. There are other forces at play here. You know, be it, you know, bankers or military industrial, we own congressmen, rule making, we need the oil, whatever thing. So to think that our political system is somehow being representative of what the people want. That's not really what's going on. And when you look to leadership, leadership of what? Going killing people and breaking things? Or what Reagan was talking about was this example of freedom for us here. Not trying absolutely, to absolutely absolutely agree with you. It, it, you're comparing apples and oranges and, and they're it, and let's go back to what we were talking about because I'll also question what the hell we're doing there okay well, we just got about 40 seconds before we go to break so i just warn you go ahead yeah and why are we there i mean you know we said he had to go and we're going to wage war against him but we're launching a war with the sole purpose of not to get rid of him so there there are ways to go about it uh and, and yes somebody has to be in charge of the mission and, and that's what we were talking about, being in charge of the mission, being in charge of the operation, and being in charge of, of this non-war we're conducting. You know, you bring up a good point. We'll talk about it when we come back. Because I remember when we were in Kosovo during the Clinton administration, they were trying to put U.S. troops under control of NATO commanders from France. And there was a, a gentleman by the name of New that said, no, 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 no. I didn't join the NATO forces. I was United States America. We'll talk about it when we come back. 